everyone, welcome to Hampton Your House. I'm looking forward to bringing some more Coastal Hamptons vibes to your house. My name is Belle and if you love Coastal Hampton style DIY projects and tips and tricks, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you know when a new video is up. Well I've been on my local buy and sell page again and I was looking for something like those amazing jars you often see in Hampton style houses. They're usually blue and white and they're usually called ginger jars or temple jars. These jars are often quite pricey to purchase. So I was really excited when I came across these old tins that look similar to ginger jars. They have embossed patterns on them and the pointy decorative pieces on the top. I'm going to prep and paint the designs back onto these tins. So come along and let's see how they turn out with a Hampton style makeover. First things first, we have to prep these babies. Because they've already been painted and the paint is quite shiny, we really need to rough up the surface before we can think about painting them again, otherwise the paint will slide right off. So here's how to prep pre-painted metal surfaces. Grab some methylated spirits and some steel wool, put on some gloves to protect your hands and grab some safety glasses or sunnies. Basically, we just need to scrub this until the paint looks dull and kind of oxidized. It's gonna take a little bit of elbow grease. When the methylated spirits dries a bit, you can see which parts are still shiny, so go over those bits again. Once you've gotten off as much of the shine as you can, and or your steel wool disintegrates, get some soapy water and give it all a good scrub, and wipe off all the debris. Rinse it in clean water and then dry it really well. And if you can, leave it in the sun for a while to make sure it's completely dry. If you don't have any sun right now, you could always blast it with the hair dryer. Next, grab an aerosol spray primer and give it a thin, even coat. Mine says it's for plastic, but it still worked just fine. So if you have the wrong kind, it might still be worth a try. Leave it to dry for the length of time specified on the can. Next, I decided to paint everything white as a base coat. The large tin I'm keeping white, so that one had three coats, and the small one had two, as I'm going to paint it blue. In hindsight though, if you're wanting to paint your tin a darker blue colour, perhaps give it a grey or darker undercoat, as I ended up having to give this tin four coats of blue to cover the white. I tried several different techniques for painting these tins, especially with the blue paint because it seemed to show every line, and I eventually decided I got the best results with a very high quality art style paintbrush to get the smoothest possible finish. If you have any tips for getting a smooth paint finish, please leave them in the comments section below. Once I was happy with the coverage of the blue paint, I wanted to mix a lighter blue to paint the designs back on with. I added some white and then realised I wanted it to be more purple, so I added some red but it still didn't look quite right. Eventually I realised that if I added purple paint I could get the right colour. Not sure why it took me so long to realise that, but hey, now you can get it right first try to get that slightly purplish lavender blue colour. You're welcome. Next, I started painting on all the white parts of the design. If you're not sure which colours to do which part of your design, you could always test out some possibilities on paper first. With the patterns, the very first time you paint it, you might be a little bit slow, but if you have a repeating pattern like this one, don't worry, you'll get faster at it. There was actually a second design too, but I decided to just leave those blue to give it some depth and dimension, but also just to save time. Once 
Once all the lavender bits were dry, I went back in to do some thin white lines on the diamond shaped borders. Hampton style ginger jars often seem to have shading and colour variation and I think this helped to give it that look. I outlined some of the white areas with a thin line of the lavender colour too. Then, once I was happy with all the designs, I got this aerosol gloss enamel clear top coat and gave it a good spray to protect all my hard work. And this tin is all done. Now I didn't film the progress of my big tin, but here are some quick photos. And here's the before and after. happy with the results of this DIY and I think the fact that I painted them myself makes them all the more fun to look at on a shelf or a coffee table. It's a good sense of achievement. I'd love to know what you thought of my tins to ginger jars DIY so please leave a comment below. It would be great to have you join me for more videos so don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram or Pinterest, I'll leave links for those below. And most of all thank you so much for watching. See you in my next video. Bye guys.